Hi, I'm Jeff Klein, editor of Radio Graphics, and today I am pleased to have with us Dr. Roberto Garcia Figueres from the Hospital Clinico Universitario Department of Radiology in Santiago de Compostela, Spain, who is the first author on one of our featured papers in the current May 2018 issue of Radio Graphics, and his paper is entitled Advanced Imaging Techniques in the Evaluation of Colorectal Cancer. Dr. Garcia Figueres, welcome to our podcast. Thank you, Dr. Klein. It's a pleasure being with you, sharing this podcast with the uh, radiographic readers. Well, thank you for joining us from Spain. Uh, Roberto, your paper reviews a number of state-of-the-art and emerging imaging techniques in the diagnosis and staging of colorectal cancer and some novel methods of assessing response to therapy. One of the main points of your paper is that traditional methods of assessment that we currently use, such as measuring tumor size, and depth of uh, extension of disease are, are rather limited. You review some of the emerging functional and molecular uh, agents that are currently being investigated in patients with colorectal cancer. Can you summarize the current state of imaging for colorectal cancer and where we're heading? And we'll also refer to figure one, which is I think nicely summarizes the role of these imaging techniques uh, using a flow diagram as you speak. Great. Really, the, the point is that uh, conventional imaging techniques are our main workhorse uh, in the evaluation of colorectal cancer. And really, they, uh, they offer a lot of information for us uh, concerning staging, evaluation of prognostic futures, etc. The problem is that our comprehensive of uh, tumor biology is growing. And now uh, we need to explore the specific characteristics of a uh, colorectal cancer, namely hormones in the literature, that are going to change during the tumor genesis. I am talking about angiogenesis, I'm talking about proliferation, I'm talking about reprogramming metabolic metabolism. And really, we need new techniques, functional and molecular imaging techniques to evaluate it specific and really important uh, conditions of tumors. Besides this, now are under research new techniques which are going to explore the heterogeneity of tumors. Really, now we know that heterogeneity is a great and important characteristic of malignant tumors and really a pronostic future for malignant tumors. And there are new techniques under research that are going to allow us to evaluate this capability of the tumor. And finally, we are managing patients. And we need to connect with clinicians, with their data, with the genetic profile of the patients. And this is the last uh, stage of the evolution of the imaging techniques. We need to connect with genetic and we need to connect our imaging data with all these elements. And that's the future of radiology, connect with radiomics and radiogenomics. That, that, that's the evolution that the, the paper try to, to create in the, in the reader. Terrific. Thank you so much for that. Now, your paper begins with a review of some recent developments in conventional imaging techniques uh, in colorectal cancer. Starting with dual energy and spectral CT, uh, let's discuss how dual energy CT, for example, can help in the detection and characterization of colorectal tumors. And we'll look at figure three, which illustrates the use of an iodine map uh, for this particular purpose. Really, in this figure, we are checking the uh, iodine contain iodine contain of this tumor. We can depict this tumor in the middle of the uh, column lumen because there is an increased uptake of iodine counters. Really, uh, uh, the the good idea with uh, dual energy city is that we can characterize materials. We can characterize fat, water. We can characterize iodine. We can characterize calcium, and that's really important because. One of the basic uh, elements in when we evaluate a, a patient is enhancement. And really, we can quantify the amount of iodine contrast in a lesion. And that's important because it's a more objective way of evaluating patients. Besides this, these techniques can help us solving problems. For example, when you have little lesions in the liver, you always have in mind perhaps are small fish or perhaps are small deposits of metastatic tumor. And 
If you detect that there is an uptake of contrast there with the technique, you can say, okay, this is a solid lesion, this is not a small fist, and we can improve our evaluation of staging in the colorectal tumor. That's important for us. Great, thank you. So now, after describing elastography of rectal tumors using endorectal uh, sonography, the paper goes into some of the volume rendering techniques that our readers uh, will already be familiar with, uh, which include virtual colonoscopy uh, and tumor volumetry. Uh, the next topic you touch on in the paper is the distinction of residual tumor from fibrosis using magnetization transfer MR. As we know, conventional MR imaging has a lot of difficulty in making this particular distinction. Uh, next in the paper is a discussion of MR imaging and assessing metastatic disease and in the preoperative assessment of liver function and hepatic functional reserve for treatment planning. The, the main focus of your paper uh, is the discussion of functional imaging, uh, namely uh, diffusion-weighted imaging and dynamic contrast-enhanced CT and MR. The paper delves into two different diffusion models, uh, which is rather complex and we're not going to review here today, but let's look at figure nine, which shows an example of DWI based on the mono-exponential ADC model, uh, a concept that I think our readers will be familiar with. And perhaps you can explain the evolving use of DWI in this particular clinical setting. Yes, really uh, diffusion is a fantastic and amazing imaging technique. Um, you can have in your machine, in every machine you can have, you can perform diffusion imaging and that's fantastic because you have universality of your imaging technique. Besides this, there are different models and this is a hot topic in the literature too, but our more basic model, mono Spanish model is really great in the clinical daily practice. You can improve your detection, you can improve your characterization, you can including include your staging of colorectal cancer. For example, you can have a whole body diffusion MRI excellent, and you can depict many deposit of the metastatic deposit of colorectal cancer. Besides this, one of the important points with colorectal cancer is the evaluation or response, and that may be important in a rectal tumor. This figure illustrates how you can uh, uh, you can select the tumor based on those values of ADC parameters, the, the, which is a quantitative parameter or restricted diffusion. You can uh, contour the tumor, and you can calculate the, the distribution of the ADC values in the tumor pre and post post-operative. And the change in the values and the change in the volume of the tumor are prognostic features in rectal cancer. Which is the problem? The problem is always the same. You can say, okay, this is a good responder, but you sometimes cannot say this is a complete responder because there are fossy of small fossy of, of, of uh, metastatic deposit in the middle of fibrotic lakes. And that's the limitation of the techniques. But think that you have a technique simple without the need of any contrast right. and you can perform in any vendor and in any machine. It's fantastic. A great clinical application as you can check in the in the, in the manuscript in the paper. Great. Thank you. So Roberta, regarding contrast enhanced imaging with uh, ultrasound and MR, Let's show figure four, which illustrates a number of these techniques, including elastography, uh, contrast-enhanced ultrasound, and also contrast-enhanced MR and DWI in, in a, a patient with a rectal tumor. Really, in figure four, we can uh, illustrate that uh, you can perform a multiparametric evaluation of the tumor because we are talking about hallmarks, specific characteristic of the tumors, but not only one parameter or only one characteristic can illustrate the tumor heterogeneity, the biological heterogeneity of the tumor phenotype. Sometimes you need to co co correlate several different parameters, and that's not easy. But concerning uh, DCI imaging techniques, uh, dynamic contrast enhanced techniques, well, uh, this is a, a fantastic technique for illustrating the functionality of tumor vessels. That is different than the, the functionality of normal vessels. 
and you can depict this in Tiomo. You can depict this for diagnosis, for establishing a prognosis. For example, you have a rectal catheter which is well performed. You know that you have good possibilities of a good response to radiotherapy or chemotherapy. That's fantastic information. And really, you are using antiangiogenic therapy. You need to explore the response based on the best imaging technique that is going to check tumor vessels. That are dynamic counter enhancing imaging techniques. That's, that's important, really. It, depending on the scenario, any technique has its own role. And you need to sometimes to correlate both several techniques in order to have the right answer to your question, your clinical question. For example, tumor response in erectile cancer. Great, thank you. So now, next to the paper, the, the functional imaging section uh, concludes with a discussion of lymph node evaluation. Uh, it, it sounds like this remains a fairly significant challenge for diagnosis, particularly since the super paramagnetic agents that uh, have been investigated in the past are, are no longer available for use. Can you summarize where we are regarding lymph node evaluation in patients with colorectal cancer? Really, uh, sometimes it seems that we are in the middle of nowhere. We are lost. We depend on the uh, conventional imaging techniques, shape, margin, internal signal, internal attenuation. And really, functional imaging techniques lack of offer a new answer. As you mentioned previously, uh, lymphotrophic counters agents uh, were the, our hope, but really, uh, they were complex to evaluate. They were uh, with problems. They were withdrawing from the market. We cannot use now this. FDA cannot uh, allow us for use this 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 concert aging actually around. And we are in the middle of nowhere. Okay, okay. Perhaps diffusion is going to improve. Not clearly, really, because normally no restricted diffusion else. Contrast enhanced can offer something, not clear also. We are in, based only in all technology, and that's the point. And for example, PET, really, the spatial resolution of PET do not allow us to, to have any answer, for example, in a rectal tumor in which the, the lip nodes are in the range of four or five millimeters. That's the problem. Right. Yeah, so it's really difficult. Yeah, well, so moving on to the um, molecular imaging section of the paper, you review the data on PET, and specifically FDG PET, uh, in colorectal cancer evaluation. Now, clearly, FDG has its limitations, which you discuss in detail in the paper. Can you summarize where we are with PET in the evaluation of these patients? And we'll look at figure 17, which illustrates the limitations of PET in this particular setting. Really, PET is a, uh, an important imaging technique. And if you check the literature, you have many data suggesting that can change the management of patients. And the question is, why are we not using this technique for staging? Because the clinical evidence is not e enough strong for suggesting, for recommending using PET CT in every patient. But really, we have several clinical uh, scenarios in which PET is great. For example, rising carcinoembryogenic uh, antigen uh, in patient with uh, operative from from rectal cancer, you can manage the patient based on PET findings. For example, when you are thinking about a resection of metastasis in a patient with colorectal cancer, the information of any other fossil or focus of a metastatic deposit is important because you can say, okay, this is not an operable patient, refuse the the, the surgery. That's important. But really, as you mentioned previously, uh, PET offer also disadvantage. For example, PET uptake depend, FDG PET uptake depends on tumor grade, tumor type, tumor histology. For example, the spatial resolution is not good. And uh, this figure illustrates that you have a patient with relapsing colorectal cancer tumor. But FDG PET does this, they did not discover the, the faulty of tumor. Be, why? Because uh, it's a methinous tumor. And then one of the limit, then one, that's one of the limitations of this kind of techniques, PET, FTG PET. There are low metabolic uh, rate in methinous tumor. There is a low metabolic rate, rate 
right in the field tumor. Right. So now after a discussion of multi-parametric imaging, which I think we've touched on when we reviewed figure four earlier, you discussed the issue of tumor heterogeneity and specifically the various techniques that you can use for this assessment. It sounds like all of these techniques are limited primarily due to a lack of correlative biological data to really understand what we're seeing. Uh, would you agree with that? Really. The problem is, there are two problems. Uh, one of them is the lack of standardization of the acquisition. And, and no universal use of these techniques. They're, they're, these techniques are main used in academic centers. And only few radiologists are in contact with these techniques. Yeah? And, and the other problem is that many of these techniques did not offer a clear correlation with biology, and that's important. We need to consider what are we going to check? And if you don't have this biological correlation, it's difficult to understand. For example, an advantage may be such as fractal analysis, which is the biological meaning of fractal analysis. It's not clear, really. And that's a problem for a daily use of this technique, this kind of techniques. Really. Right. So now finally, you discuss Radio, radiomics and radiogenomics in colorectal cancer, which is obviously a topic of great interest uh, in the evaluation of many diseases. Uh, but again, it looks like we're in the very early stages of understanding the correlation between the quantitative imaging data that we get from our studies and some of the clinical you know, laboratory and genomic information related to these tumors. Is, is that a fair statement? Yeah, really. The, the point is that there is uh, a limited correlation of these questions. But if you have been last aerosol meeting, I suppose that you were there. All, all the meeting was devoted to artificial intelligence, okay, to big data, and to integrate images with clinical data, with genetic data, radiomics, and genomics. And that could be the future. Renzo Piano, a famous architect, say the past is a great, is really attractive. But there is only one place where you can go, the future. And that's the future of images, right? Absolutely. Well, Dr. Garcia Figueres, thank you to, uh, for taking the time to speak with us today about your really fascinating paper, which appears in the current May 2018 issue of Radiographics and deals with advanced imaging techniques in the evaluation of patients with colorectal cancer. Uh, thank you very much for uh, speaking with us today. Thank you, Dr. Klein. Thank you to you.